Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to look at the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is a formula that helps us to solve for x in a quadratic equation when our quadratic is set equal to zero. So here I have the standard form of a quadratic. And the way we know that this is a quadratic is the degree of this polynomial is two. The highest exponent in there is two. And when I have a quadratic in standard form where I have a number um, times my x squared plus another number times my x plus a constant there on the end, when I have this quadratic um, function and I set it equal to zero, then I can solve for x by using this formula. And the formula goes something like this. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to use that formula to help me to solve for x when my function is equal to zero in this quadratic function. So here I have a quadratic. My a in this case is that coefficient in front of my x squared. So my a is one. My b is a negative four. And my c is a negative seven. Now, all I do is take those values and substitute them into my formula. So I have x equals negative b. Notice that it's a negative of that negative 4. The negative of my b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So I'm going to solve for my x values in this quadratic that's set equal to 0. We've learned when we're dealing with um, polynomials that when I'm looking for my x-intercepts, my y is 0. And so this can also help me find those x-intercepts in this quadratic. Now, it's just a matter of doing the arithmetic. A negative and a negative makes that a positive. Underneath the radical, a negative 4 squared is 16. This first number will always be positive because we're going to be squaring the number. So it will always turn out positive. Here, though, the sign is going to be different depending on what the signs are of your a and c. Here I have a negative 4 times a negative 7, so it's going to be a positive number. And then I have 4 times 7 is 28, all over 2 times 1 is 2. I'm going to add underneath my radical there, so that I have um, 30, 44, so it's the square root of 44, all over 2. I'm going to simplify under that radical. Remember, when we simplify under a radical, we look for a perfect square. Here I see the perfect square of 4 goes into that 44. So I have the square root of 4 times 11 is 44. I can rewrite this with a as the square root of 4 times the square root of 11. So I can rewrite that as 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 11. Still all over that 2. x equals, still leave this alone for now. This, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 11 is just not a pretty number. We're going to leave that there. But I've simplified that radical. Now, notice there's a factor of 2 here, a factor of 2 there, and a factor of 2 here. I can um, break up this fraction into 4 over 2, plus or minus 2 on the square root of 11 over 2. If I were to add these two, I would keep my denominator and add my numerator. So I would go back from here to there. Now I can simplify each part. 
4 divided by 2 is 2, plus or minus this 2 divided by that 2 is 1, so it leaves me with the square root of 11. So I have two different answers here. x is equal to 2 plus the square root of 11. In a former video, we looked at that the square root of 11 is about uh, 3 and a little bit. So, you know, this is about 5 and a little bit. And then here, 2 minus the square root of 11 is the other one. That's what this plus or minus means is it means I have two answers, a plus version and a minus version. So here it's two minus three and a little bit, so we're at a negative, um, a little bit, uh, one, one and a little bit. So those are our um, x values, and that's how we use the quadratic formula to help us to solve for x in a quadratic when our quadratic is set equal to zero. Math made simple, it's some math. Thanks for watching.